Range Rover created a new motoring category, and arguably, despite recent competition, it remains in a class of its own. But in its 50 years, it's come a long way. The latest version is light years away from the original model, but the DNA is still there. And you can trace the bloodline all the way back through those five decades of production. I'm here with Adrian Price, Solly Hull's operations manager, to tell me about this very special latest edition. So this is, this is one of the special edition vehicles you've got here today to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Range Rover. We'll be building 1970 of these limited editions. 1970, uh, 50 Exactly, yeah. And they'll be available in four, four colors to celebrate that history. And I can see even already there's little 50th icons there That's and right. on the headdress and it's every car's individually numbered. That's right, yeah. No, so you'll see quite a lot of design cues as you, as you see the vehicle, but you'll also see back to some of the original history. This is the, the 2012 Range Rover that's now available in that special edition for 15 years. And that, and that was the first time we had the aluminium monocoque. Yeah, I can see, I mean, it's such a, well, this is the latest version of that, of the car, but you can always still see it's a Range Rover, isn't right. it? You have these little design cues that take you all the way back to that original model. Yeah, no, so all the way back to 1970, you can still see the clamshell uh, bonnet, you can still see the gill uh, on the side the of the floating car. Floating roof line. That's right, yeah, so you've still got those, those design cues, even though we're 50 years on. I think speaking to Jeremy McGovern in the past about this car, it's quite interesting because the breadth of its capabilities is enormous and it might not get used every day, but just knowing that's on hand, it's almost like having a, a Swiss watch that can go to a thousand feet below the sea. You might not necessarily use it, but you want to know it has that engineering integrity. And I think that's a, a very similar concept with Rainbow. Yeah, it, it, it is. And that, that's all terrain capability. We, we really demonstrate to our customers when we we give them some of the off-road experiences and like you say, not something that they use on a daily basis, but absolutely blows their mind in terms of the capability um, that they've got if, if they need it. And it's nice to be here at uh, Solihull at the sort of home of Range Rover <coughs> to celebrate this anniversary. Yeah. That's right, yeah. So 80 years ago is, is when we first started producing cars on this site here uh, in Solihull. 50 years since uh, the Range Rover started coming off uh, the production line in block one. Uh, in June 1970. Well, I'm off to another location that's part of the Range Rover story, East Knoll, which is... That's great. So that's, that's going right back to where the engineering started 50 years ago and still continues today. And that all-terrain capability we've spoken about is certainly what you'll see there. So maybe the car won't be quite as clean and shiny as this, but we'll get into the mud and see what it's all about. Thank you very much. Thank you. Range Rovers have always been mighty off-road, but the original idea was for a car that would spend probably as much time in the mud as on the tarmac. And in 1966, Rover engineers Charles Spencer King and Gordon Bashford began creating the recipe for the car we know so well today. And this is what they came up with. Well, maybe not quite this, it had a little bit more metalwork and a roof. But as you can see, unlike the aluminium monocoque of the modern car, this is a steel box construction. And here at East Knorr, Land Rover's proving ground, is where this original Range Rover earned its off-road stripes. here with Mike Bishop, Classics, well, also known as Classics Mr. Land Rover. Tell me all about this thing. So this vehicle is absolutely awesome. This is the original development driving chassis that they produced in 1969. And uh, they, I mean, they've done a few things with, uh, with driving chassis to understand how the suspension worked. Because obviously this was built as a passenger carrying vehicle a luxury vehicle, an off-road vehicle, and a practical vehicle. Four cars in one, that was 
the original sales slogan. So quite revolutionary at the time. Incredible, it was like a spaceship. You don't often see too many Range Rovers these days in this much mud, but why is it so important that it's such an incredible off-road vehicle, even when it doesn't get used maybe so much as it would do? Well, it's, it's part of its DNA, isn't it? So there's original four cars in one, an off-road vehicle. And I mean, this vehicle's now, you know, from 1969. And you, you see a lot of Range Rovers and Land Rovers have lasted this long. And even though when they're brand new, they might not get used this much, but as they go through that cycle of use and go through various, you know, you know various owners, various fans, yeah, the, the use is slightly different. So it, it has to be a you know, premium car. It has to be, you know, impeccably of taste and it has to be perfect off-road. Well, we've got this fantastic off-road test facility here. Why is Eastnor so good? East is, East is awesome. And it's just, it, it's, it's a place where they could suddenly, you know, start to do real world testing, you know, in one location. They didn't have to go out to here or over there. They could, you know, set up a little base here, have some vehicles and start to do, you know, repetitive testing to get, you know, benchmarks in place to make the vehicles better. And we still use it today. You know, you look at, you know, the original film, the launch film, where this very chassis is driving around in the snow, you know, you know with someone actually mad enough to do it. And you start to join all those historical dots. It does sort of, you know, bring a sort of flutter to the heart. Yeah. Well, Mike, thanks very much. I'll leave you to go and uh, play with this car some more. But uh, it's incredible to think from these wet, muddy fields that the original Range Rover was born. And the difference between this car and that car that 115,000 pound luxury limousine that brought me here has been 50 years of development and evolution of the motoring legend. Here at Jaguar Land Rover Classic, you can see examples from the Range Rover family tree. And with their Reborn program, they're working really hard to keep these older cars roadworthy and in fine fettle. I'm here with Dan Pink, director here at Classic. Welcome, David. Should we take a seat? Absolutely. So, Dan, tell us what you do here at Classic. Well, we're the official source of authentic cars, whether it be purchasing a rare and collectible classic Jaguar and Land Rover, buying one of our fully restored back to original specification vehicles, or creating new legends such as our Jaguar D-Type continuation program. We have a parts team that are focused on ensuring the supply of parts remains open, as well as reintroducing or introducing new parts into the classic market. And the workshop behind us has a range of services for customers from basic vehicle health checks to retrimming the interior right through to bespoke custom builds. And we also have a collection of around 100 classic Jaguar and Land Rovers, which we use for various activities, but all focused on ensuring that enthusiasts can really experience, you know, the iconic vehicles of our history. There's a real Aladdin's cave back there of vehicles. It's quite exciting. Yeah. I mean, like walking around there, it's, you know, which one's my favourite, which one's my favourite. And, you know, you forget what's in there. And bringing people in, you know, we have customers and members of the public coming into Classic. And when you get round in, you know, into the Aladdin's cave, that is a moment where you see everyone's eyes just light up. And you know, rightly so. And here today we're talking about Range Rover and in the top tier of your sort of restoration uh, services is the Reborn program. I mean, that is pretty amazing when you look at the quality of that car back there. Yeah, and that's, that's what we strive for, is that quality and you know, the authentic standard which these cars have been built to, which is the original 1970s specification. And I think, you know, as an individual myself, trying to restore one of those vehicles to that quality is challenging. You know, fortunately, we've got you know, the original drawings, the tooling and the skilled technicians here, which you know, really enable us to meet that benchmark, which customers, you know, you and I would expect of a Range Rover Classic. Well, I drove here today in, in one of the brand new 50th anniversary models, which is a, a fantastic modern vehicle. But what do you think is the charm of these older Range Rovers? I think it's they're iconic. And I think the they were pioneers in the 1970s when they came out, not just from the all-terrain 
permanent first vehicle to have permanent four-wheel drive capability, but also how they looked and their shape and the fact that they were the first luxury SUV vehicle in the market and they changed things. You know, generations, the vehicle that you came in, when you look at the 1970s Range Rover and look at today's, it just proves that you know, when we launched it in 1970, it was so right for the market. Well, thanks, Dan. I'm going to take a look at the back catalogue and have a, and have a sneak around this place. Really appreciate your time. Thank no you. Problem. Thank you. So happy birthday, Range Rover. 50 years of innovation and breaking new ground in the way we imagine luxury motoring. This, of course, is not the end of the story. And the car that broke the mold and created a category all of its own has a healthy future ahead. And to celebrate, we brought some of the most iconic models from through the years here to Goodwood House.